Hey everyone, it's Darius. Welcome back to MicroPython, and in this video I'm going to be talking about a very useful feature of MicroPython called interrupts. And we will use interrupts to fix an issue that we encountered in the last video uh, where the presence of a infinite uh, while loop in main.py uh, kept the REPL or blocked the REPL from starting up. And just to illustrate this again, I've installed the program from the last video. And you can see that no REPL has started. The program is working. We push the button, the LED comes on. But if I want the REPL, I have to cause a keyboard interrupt. And now that I see the REPL, but the program no longer is, is running at all. And we don't like this because that's kind of it defeats the whole purpose of the power of MicroPython. Ideally, our program would be running and we could start the REPL and perhaps um, interact with the program as it's running in, in real time. Uh, something that you, you know, cannot do that, like that in C++. So what we will do is rewrite our program using an alternative, using the interrupts instead of the while loop. The first part of the program will be mostly uh, the same. We're still, of course, using the pin class from machine. And our hardware setup hasn't changed. The LED, of course, is still an output on pin 5 and the button on 0. But this is where it will change. Let me talk briefly about interrupts, though, before we write any code. So the, the general concept of an interrupt is a, um, an event. So whenever a a uh, event such as a pin changing, uh, whenever that happens, it will notify the program that uh, some event has happened and y you need to handle it. So instead of running a continuous loop and with each and every iteration checking the state of the pin, setting the value of LED, or setting the value of LED to something else, um, where this eats up all of the CPU's clock cycles and actually runs many times that are unnecessary because for most of the time the button isn't changing state at all and it will there will be a lot of times where the LED is already on and it tells it to turn on again, which really does nothing. So we are ultimately wasting clock cycles. Instead, what we'd rather do is only turn the LED on once whenever the button is pressed. And after we've turned it on, then the REPL can start. The rest of the program, you know, if we have more Python code that we want to run or do something else, we can. And we'll, we won't even worry about it until the button gets pressed again. Or, or the button gets released and then we can turn the LED off and then return to what we're doing. So interrupts are events that momentarily uh, stop the main flow of your code to handle something real quick and then jump back in and continue what you were doing before. In this case the main flow or the main program that we're running is the REPL and when the button is pressed it will pause to either turn the LED you know, on or if it's released it will turn it off. Okay, so let's now show this implemented in code. There's just one function that you need to call on the pin that you'll be setting up an interrupt on. And it's called IRQ. I think it's called IRQ because it is it's not a word, but it would stand for uh, interrupt ooh. <laughs> interrupt request. Now, there's, there is a queue at the end, so 
I is for interrupt, R is for request, and I think some people might put the word query at the end, IRQ, but in my mind, a query is the same thing as a request, so, you know, we'll just use this Q. Alright, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's called an interrupt request, because that's what you're doing. You're requesting that uh, you want this button to trigger interrupts or cause or inter you know cause interrupts of the main program whenever it changes state and when an interrupt does happen all you have to do is just give it the name of a function that you want to run um, each time the pin changes state and let's uh, go ahead and create that function now it will call uh, it being the IRQ method will call um, this function with a single parameter pin it just wants to make sure that you know which pin is changing state in our example we only have one button we only have one input pin so of course we know that BTN is the value or is the pin that changed state that will be reading the value of but in the case where you had program with lots and lots of input pins all with their own interrupts firing uh, and also if you were using the same handler the same uh, function for several pins then it would be really handy to know which pin caused the interrupt but again in our example it doesn't really matter because both pin and BTN refer to the same they both refer to pin 0 Okay, so let's actually implement this and say, we'll, uh, you know, tell it to turn the LED on and off. So um, whenever the th this function runs when the pin change state, so we'll first check to see if that change results in, in the button now reading a zero, which we know if it reads a zero on a active low button then it must have been uh, pressed so we'll turn the LED on otherwise if the button changed state and it didn't change to a zero in other words it changed to a one the button was released and we can turn the LED off now you'll notice that this is the exact same code that we put in our while loop. Well, almost exact. We can use the little shortcut. But now it's the exact same code. However, it will be much more efficient because this function only runs when the button changes state, not hundreds of thousands of times whenever no one's even touching the button. So let's give it a run, see how it uh, performs. So we're hoping for a REPL. And that's exactly what we got. Very nice. All right, so the REPL's working, and also the button's working. And I can use both simultaneously without either one seeming to be blocked. Now, if you think about what's going on here, we know that when I press the button, the REPL is actually temporarily interrupted, paused, until the handler finishes. But since this is such a short process, I mean, it's, it's four lines of code, all we have to do is read a button and then do an if statement. You know, this probably takes maybe 10 on the order of like 10 microseconds or something. So as a human, we won't notice. Um, I can press the button as fast as I want and I'm not going to notice a delay at all. Now what if you did have a long running process though? Oh, I wanted to point out at this point like I've covered most of the basics of interrupts uh, so now I'm doing some more um, just for, for the you know for the fun of science or curiosity 
or just so that you can understand the interrupt mechanism a little better. There is more to learn. If you were to stop watching now though, you would know enough to you know, start using interrupts in your projects. Okay, so let's try to answer the question, what happens if you have a long running process in your handler? To do that, I will uh, import the sleep function from time that we used in one of the earlier videos to blink an LED. And we'll just put the processor to sleep for like three seconds. Now, one of the questions we want to answer is what happens when two interrupts happen or are, are um, requested right after another such that you have an interrupt run and then another interrupt happens while the first one is still running? Do interrupts interrupt each other or do they have to wait? Let's find out. So first we notice that when we click the button, the LED still comes on and we release it. Uh, it will come off, or it will turn off. Um, however, if we press it very quickly, um, even though pressing is a interrupt and releasing is an interrupt, the LED stayed on until three seconds were up. So this informs us that the interrupts do not in fact interrupt each other otherwise as soon as we release the button it would have interrupted the sleep and turned it off so we know that interrupts have to wait one after another okay so the the final thing that I want to mention about interrupts before we conclude here is that sometimes um, you may not care that an interrupt simply is changing state. You might only want to run a handler function on a specific condition like like um, when the pin is rising or when it changes from a 0 to a 1 and you don't care about it. You don't want to even do anything when it changes from you know the other way around 1 to 0. And you could do it with an if statement in here and just ignore everything else. Um, but there's actually a way to configure the interrupt to only run on rising or falling. So the second parameter, you can give it a option and it can either be IR, uh, pin dot IRQ rising or falling. So if we were to set it to rising. Let's get this sleep out of here. Now our, our MyFunk will only run when we release the button. So let's, uh, you know what, since we do have a working REPL, take advantage of that and print, um, actually the print would work even without a uh, REPL. But, you know, we'll, we'll just call this uh, rising. So if all is well, nothing should happen when I push the button down. Okay, nothing. But when I release it, the text rising is printed out. So that's a little bit more advanced usage of interrupt requests and if, or uh, yeah, the IRQ function. If you wanted a full out definition, um, you know, there's always the online documentation, but it's pretty nice to just see a demonstration of it being used. Um, so, uh, thank you for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one.